Check out Paddy's Rewards Club. Place five bets of £10 or more across any sport in a week and get a £10 free bet the next week. Paddy Power, you beauty! Max £10 bonus per person per week. Excludes shop bets. Selected odds, conditions and exclusions apply. 18 plus, be Hi there. A very warm welcome along to the Racing Post weekend postcast. I'm Bruce Millington and joining me today to look ahead to a fantastic Saturday which features Charles Day at Cheltenham are my Racing Post colleagues, James Hill, and making a very welcome postcast debut, Mr. Tom Park. Tom, as hopefully you all know, is the shrewdy who writes the anti-post tipping column for the Racing Post and has got loads and loads of uh, really big value bets for the festival already in the can. What's your favourite one at the moment, Tom? Who do you like best? Uh, I like Elegant Escape's chances in the National Hunt Chase. I was pleased that... Um, what did you tip him up at? Uh, I think it was 25 to 1. I think. Ooh, it might have you. been cut to 20 on the day, I'm not sure. But it was 20 or 25 to 1. I just think that um, it was a good thing presenting Percy. I think presenting Percy is a bit of a monster, but he'll be going to the RSA now. And um, yeah, I think That's it, looking it, good, it, is he it? stays well. And Tizard's haven't been running well all season, but he's, he, he looks good over fences. I think he'll be better at the festival as well. Brilliant stuff. OK, coming up on the show today, we've got four races on Saturday from Cheltenham on ITV4. It's Trials Day and we've got some really big names including Bristol Demai. We've got three really good races at Doncaster as well. The lads will be looking at all the other cards and then we'll have a quick look at Sunday as well. Unfortunately, something's happened. The Gremlins have got in and we can't get the lads in Ireland. But DJ has sent me his tips. So the beauty there is you get all his wisdom without the waffle. So that's got to be good. Um, Obviously, as is tradition with the postcast, when we get a debutant, we ask a few questions just to get to know them. So, Tom, uh, fo which football team do you support? Sunderland, unfortunately. Ah, oh, bless your heart. Favourite flavour of crisps? Salt and vinegar. Really? Yeah. How many packets of crisps do you eat a week? I'm not a big crisp fan, Aren't to you? be honest. No, my girlfriend, she loves crisps. Don't you, what's her favourite flavour? Oh, anything. Anything that involves potatoes, I think. <laughs> Puppies or kittens? Puppies. Good man. And how many times did you cry in 2017, do you reckon? Can't count. Too many to count. Oh, really? I'm a bit of an emotional oh, wreck yeah? at times, yeah. I thought you roughy tufty northeast no, dudes. That was just, illegal. Just put on a hard face. Oh, good lad. Excellent. OK, Tom, you're very welcome. Hopefully you've got some winners. James has been studying long and hard as well, so we'll get cracking straight away and we'll start with the first of the televised races at Cheltenham on Saturday. It's on ITV4. It's going to be a great day. Really looking forward to it. Weather not great. Going definitely going to be soft, just depends on how much rain gets into the ground. But the 150 is the Festival Trials Handicap Chase. And because we haven't got any from, from Paddy Power this week, I am reading the Paddy Power betting. Don't forget, bigger prices may be available elsewhere. But here's how Paddy Power bet on the 150 at Cheltenham. It's 9-2. to two. Kustar, Sivala, 5-1 to one Frodons, 5-1 to one Ballyhill, 7 Kings Odyssey, 10-007, 12 Shanty Flyer, 12 Drumley Street, and 14 Bar. Tom, you are the guest, so you're going first. Who's going to win this? I really like the favourite, Kustar Sivilla. Um, I think he's been given a huge chance by the, the handicapper. He's £3 lower than when he ran at the festival. Um, and he's done nothing wrong over fences, beaten not far by Finian's Oscar, um, and then reversed the form and move of the times. Um, beaten by a good one of Neil Mulholland's, I think, that day. Um, and one off a mark of one three five, I think he's a good bit better than that. And um, I think at a price double or seven might outrun his odds. Um, but I think Aintree is probably his big target. Um, so yeah, I think Kustar Civil is the one to beat. Definitely. I needed Kustar Civil to win at the festival last year to absolutely get me out of trouble. But he ran well, but couldn't quite get it done. Um, James, who do you think is going to win this one? Well, Tom, Tom mentioned double o seven. Um, and uh, he's been running well this season. Um, two good runs at Newbury and Ascot, and he was uh, dropped a pound for his effort last time. I think this is probably his best distance, two and a half miles. Uh, he travels well, jumps well, um, and he's a sort of horse that seems to go on any ground, so I don't think the uh, rainy conditions will be a problem for him. Um, the favourite, uh, definitely well-treated Kustar Sivilla. They did, really did crawl in the last two races he's running, so I'm just concerned with his lack of experience, whether the pace of the race might just catch him out a bit. He's only a novice, so I think at 10 to 1, uh, good each way play. Okay, so the boys are very, they kind of agree, but disagree, which is their number one choice. Tom likes uh, Kustos Savola with a side order of 007, and James is the other way around, his main fancy. 007, jolly good, we're off and running. 225, the Bet Bright trial, Cotswold chase, and we've got a very big name. Looks like trouble. You have to go all the way back to 2000. Looks like trouble to find the last source to win this and then follow up in the Gold Cup. 
But there will still be people, even though the Gold Cup isn't run at Haydock, who think Bristol Demire is a contender. He is the 11 to 8 Fav with Paddy Power to win the Cotswold Chase. It's 5 to 1, definitely red. 5 the last Samurai, 11 to 2 American, 6 T for 2, 20 Theatre Guide, 25 the quaintly named Single Farm Payment, and 33 Perfect Candidate. So we've got each way betting, the flat eight. James, you're going to go first this time. Well, I know older horses have a good record in this race, but I, I just get suckered into these uh, younger, improving types. That's why I prefer American. Um, I know he's coming off a, a, a poor effort in the uh, Labricks Trophy. It was poor, wasn't it? It was. Um, what do we do I, about I, I watched the race again. I mean, I, he, he um, didn't, I think, run as badly as, as that pulled up figure necessarily suggests. I think it's... They went such a hot pace as they always do in that race, and it just caught him out a bit. He's, he's um, not a very experienced horse, very fragile. I think Harry Fry's uh, said uh, once that you know this, his race coming up could always be his last. I mean, he, you just never know when it might be the end of his career. He's so fragile. But he is very talented, and the key to him is soft ground, which he's, he's going to get um, a good jumper. And for me, he's a, the horse, in, one horse in the race who you, who you feel could step up to the mark from what he's done, whereas the others are a bit more exposed. Well, what do you make of Bristol? Well, I, once again, I say, I say again, because he's done it before in his career, he disappointed just out of the blue at Kempton last time. And, and given that, I, I think his price is pretty short, really. I mean, you can say that he really needs soft ground, but I mean, it wasn't lightning quick ground or anything at Kempton. It was, they had rain the evening before, and it was soft enough. They were finishing tired. And he, he, he just finished tamely again. Um, and for all he's very talented, I just think he's beginning to prove a bit disappointing. Well, he's either very uplifting or very disappointing. Yeah. Does he do it for you, Tom? I, th I think he's a bit of a one-track pony, to be honest. I think Haydock, soft ground, I mean, if he gets them conditions next year, it wouldn't surprise me if he was to win that race again. You can look at his King George run in two different ways. He's either, you either give him another chance, at which point he's probably a contender at the festival. Um, He's not my kind of bet at that at the price that he is at the moment. Um, Who is your kind of bet? I, I, I think I, I like definitely red. I just I think he's a real solid each way bet in the race where you're getting three places. I just can't see him being out of the top three. Um, I, you're looking at some. I'm looking at something to beat um, to beat Bristol Demai. I get Jimmy's point about um, American, but I, I thought that run was. It's too bad, to be honest, to be backing him on the back of that. I, I can't give him another chance. Um, so, yeah, definitely red for me. OK, three o'clock at Cheltenham is the, uh, it's the Ballymore Classic Novices Hurdle and Santini, a horse we were hoping to see last week but didn't, heads the market at 2-1 to one with uh, Mulcahy's Hill at 7-2. to two. Tick and Bar at fives, Black Op is sixes, and it's 13-2 Pacific, The Bone, 8-1 to one, Slate House, 25 Bar, and uh, Tom, you to serve. I'm willing to give Slate House another chance. I just thought his run at Ascot was, was too bad to be true. Um, he ran really well in November um, at the meeting there, um, beating Summerville Boy, which the form's been franked. Um, and I just, I know he's got a five pound penalty to, to shoulder to um, Santini, but I think that he's the, um, I think he's a good each-way alternative. I, I, I liked him before his Ascot run. Was it that bad, the Ascot run? I mean, it's disappointing because, <laughs> you know, the sky was the limit up till then. But, I mean, he's not he, got he, beat that far by some decent horses. He's he, giving away to it as well. Yeah, like he was. I mean, he, he, he was travelling all right. And then he just, um, he went out quite quickly. But then he did stay on towards the finish. I, I think he's a good horse. I mean, after his Cheltenham run, I thought, in November, I thought he was a, I thought he was a live festival contender. Um, and as I said, the, the forms worked out well with Somerville boys. So, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to give him another chance at eight, nine to one. I think he's a each way, or just in case Santini does prove to be excellent. Yeah, he's a talking horse, isn't he? I, I think, and he, I think he's an each way bet. Yeah, I, I, I like him. I think that Ascot back run was too bad to be true. James, do you fancy Santini? Are going to take him on? I think I'm going to take him on. Um, worried uh, particularly about this rain that falls for him. He looks more of a, a speed horse than anything. Um, I mean, there are lots of nice types in here. It's a um, fantastic little race. The one that catches my eye is Black Op. Um, he stepped up to this distance, two and a half miles at Doncaster last time, won impressively enough. But it's his bumper form for, from last term, which is very interesting. He beat uh, Claim and Take in Forgan, who was entered in this race, and uh, beat Slate House at mm. Ascot 
and won impressively that day, beat him and ended up um, being favourite for the Aintree bumper at the, the Grand National meeting. Uh, and he beat Tickenbar that day as well. Um, looks a big chasing type, so I don't expect the ground to be a problem for him. Um, and he looks to have plenty of potential. Um, and he's getting weight from Slate House and, and Tickenbar too. Righty ho chaps, well done. And the final TV race on ITV4 on Saturdays, the 335, the galliardhomes.com. Cleave Hurdle, Finian's Oscar back over hurdles, heads the market at five to two. Twister has the second favourite in Holstone, and then it's Beer Goggles at six to one. We'll talk about that in a moment. Six to one, The World's End, seven to one, Agripart, eight to one, Thomas Campbell, 12 to one, Colin's sister, 33 to one, Bar. Now, before you guys give us what you think through your cold-hearted assessment of the form book, I mean, I just think with the Beer Goggles situation, one of the saddest stories we've had to cover ever in the Racing Post with Richard, the loss of Richard Woodcock in the week. Um, his wife, Kayleigh, is going to run Beer Goggles. There's a fundraiser to, to, to raise money in Richard's name and, and do you know, great things for great causes there. We were looking at this as one of the stories of the flat season for all the right reasons, weren't we? You know, up and coming trainer, um, enjoying a, a slice of glory. It's now extremely poignant um, and I guess everyone, whoever they backs in this race, is going to be rooting for beer goggles, aren't they? You know, and yeah. it, it would be, you know, it would be very, very lump in the throat time if he runs well. Let's hope he does. But chaps, if we're having a bet, um, who do we think is going to win this race? Um, well, uh, the, the the two who finished uh, first and second on New Year's Day, Holston and Agrapar, um, I think both could run very well again. Um, I'm going to uh, take Agripar to turn the form around with Holston. Um, I think the step up in track will actually suit him. But he does need really soft ground, so it's just a question of how much rain falls. Um, if a lot fell, I, I really would fancy his chances. Um, but if not that much fell, he might just get outpaced by one or two. But I'm, I'm get, given it's quite soft ground, I don't think you're going to need that much rain for it to get really quite testing. At this time of year. The trouble with Cheltenham, of course, James, is it like, you know, it's got this little microclimate with the hills around. You know, it, it, you can look at a weather map and think it's going to absolutely chuck it down all that's over the place. Say, yeah, it that's what they say. Absolutely. It? it can, you know, go that side of the hill or, or whatever the rain sometimes. And it looks like it's, it's heading north anyway, most of the rain. So, so you're going to go Agripar and the more rain, the better. Yeah? The more rain, the better, yeah. Tom Park, who do you like? I'm a big Finian's Oscar fan. Um, it's been hugely disappointing to see the way he's gone this season. Um, I think they had to go back hurdling. Um, I think he will still make a good chaser in time. But I mean, I had him down as a future Gold Cup horse at the start of the season. I thought he'd win whatever race he ran in at the festival. I still think he'll win at the festival. Um, Which race? I think he'll run in the stairs because I think he'll win them tomorrow. Um, and he's getting three pound from most of them. I, I just think I think he's a real good thing tomorrow. Um, I really like him. Um, I think he's a class horse. Um, his Ascot run wasn't even that bad, I didn't think. He, he, his class got him that close, really. I mean, he's got a huge engine. Value um, at five to two, Tom? Or just the right price? I think he is. I, th I, 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 just, I think he's a, a class act in not the classes to fields. Um, I just, I, I mean, he was, a, he was the top class novice last season and... I've yet to see a better performance than that, over the, even over three miles. Um, and I think he's a big player come the festival. OK, quick one. Michael O'Leary thinks there should be a Ryanair chase for hurdlers, i.e. over two and a half miles. Yes or no, James? No. Why? Be because I'm just worried about um, how it would kind of stretch the quality out over the three races, a champion hurdle. I think step. everyone is, but... In, in principle, it's, it's a good idea. It's just a problem with hurdling. You've got these young horses also stepping up to go chasing as well. Mm. So you don't, for me, you don't have as many hurdlers around as you would well, say. Well, now they're all buggering off to Australia at the moment they show they've got any kind of stamina. Well, yeah, the, the, the these, the these, you're not getting as many flat horses as we were ten years ago. That's what about you, Tom? Well. Yes or no? Yeah, it's not for me either. I, it, you look at the um, the champion hurdle market and the stayers market at the moment. You've got Bouvardet at the top, and then it's a pretty poor race it's taking terrible. him out. The stayers is wide open but there's not a class act in there yet to really establish himself and if you have a two and a half mile hurdle race this year I mean who, who'd be favourite for that? Apples Jade. Well Apples Jade would she still run in the mare's? Don't have the mare's hurdle. 
Well, don't know. Why'd you have a mayor? Why'd you have a mayor's hurdle over the trip, but not on a championship all races? Yeah. That doesn't make sense. But to the, me. The, the, the have over the last ten years, have been plenty of good um, two and a half milers. We haven't had quite had the speed for the champion yeah. hurdle, and there just haven't been enough of them for me. Whereas when the Ryanair <coughs> was created, there was a definite problem of the likes of Fonmore or, or whatever like, horses like that. They were that just had nowhere to go. And there was a, a definite need for a race like the Rhino. I'm just not quite sure there's enough good horses. I just got a little division. pang when you said Fon Mort. What a lovely old beast he was. Let's look at the rest of the Cheltenham card because obviously it starts with a bang. At the 12.45, we've got the JCB Triumph Hurdle Trial, which has been won by Peace and Co. and Deffy De Soy in recent years. And the brilliant um, Apple Shakiri uh, runs here. She's the 11 to 4 Fav with Paddy Power. Um, to win the Triumph, you'd expect her to win this. Chaps, give me any thoughts you've got on the card. So we've got obviously got her at 12.40, we've got the, the uh, Good Novice Chase at 1.15, and then we've got the Handicap to finish at 4.10. Anything in there, James, that isn't your nap? Um, well, uh, yeah, there's Mr. Whitaker in the second race, at the uh, Novice Handicap Chase 1.15. Um, it's not uh, quite as competitive as I thought it might be. It, it looked very hot at the five-day stage. Still a good race, but Mr. Whitaker is a, um, a young, improving horse. Uh, ran really well at Kempton uh, last time, went second. Um, and on his pedigree, suggests that uh, he will handle soft ground fine. So um, there might not be that much rain anyway by that stage. So um, he looks like a horse who could go very close to me. And in the final race um, at 4.10, uh, the McManus horse, Literale C, uh, was an impressive winner at Ludlow last time. Um, effectively £10 higher. Now, it is interesting that Barry Geraghty was uh, jocked up on him earlier in the week, um, and uh, I think he's got a favourites chance. Uh, yeah, the ground should be no problem for him, and Harry Fry's in tremendous form. So. Lovely. Tom, anything else at Cheltenham for you? Well, just on, with regards to Apple Shakira, I, th I think she'll win tomorrow, no problem, but um, I really don't fancy her um, Do at the festival at all. I'm just not, com I'm not convinced one bit. Um, who to do you be like eleven for the, to for the triumph at the moment. Um, I I can't believe that Apple Shakira's eleven to four and Nicky Henderson's other horse, We Have a Dream, is eight to one. Um, I just think his his forms. I think his forms better. I think his performances are better. I think there's more scope for improvement. I'm just Apple Shakira's done it in small fields on soft ground at Cheltenham. I just think in a big field with a scorching pace, I'd. I'm dead against her. Um, as I said, I think she'll win tomorrow, no problem. OK. Um, Jolly good. Well done to Dave from Dublin, who is our latest competition winner. He wins a £25 free bet from Paddy Power for correctly answering the question on Monday's show. Um, we are now going to look at the Doncaster TV action.